Hey, this is Lucian for Out of This Binary, and this week we are talking about pronouns. As you may know, I am Brazilian, so my everyday life doesn't go in English, so my relationship to pronouns is very, very different in the international online community and in my everyday life. So I'm gonna focus on my everyday life and gendered language and Portuguese uh, because I know a lot of you out there live in other countries that don't speak English either and most of the languages outside English are really fucking gendered. Ha. Yeah, life is... sucks. Well, in English, life is easy. I know it's not... I'm not saying it is easy, but I'm saying that in other languages we have a lot more things to worry about than you folks have in English. The only gendered thing, other than words like daughter and son, most of them have a gender neutral alternative. Other than that, the only moment where gender appears in language is with pronouns, and pronouns only appear when a third person is referring to you. Like, in, in a direct conversation between you and someone else, you very rarely use pronouns. And still, you have the gender-neutral alternative, they, that even though some people are awkward and complain about it, it is fairly widespread. But in here... Oh, the situation is a lot different, a lot different. We have gendered pronouns, and with the plural pronouns, that would be the equivalent to they, they are also gendered. Wow, it's so amazing. The only pronoun that is not gendered is the second person, like you, uh, when I'm talking to you. Yeah, it's not gendered. So, <laughs> uh, all the other ones are. So, we, we have no alternative. We have no gender neutral alternative other than made up pronouns. Even then, there are some made up pronouns quite standard, but they are really not widespread. So, we basically have to deal with the two mainstream pronouns and find our better way to relate to them. Other than that, Portuguese and so many other languages have the ending of the words changing according to gender. And I, well, it, it has been, I think, two or two and a half years since I started realizing I was trans. And I used to go to therapy by then. And I used to talk a lot about, about myself and uh, with those reflexive gendered words. And I realized it started to bother me. Most people don't really mind about gender. They don't have a problem with gender. Only us trans people. Huh. So the way we are used to talk goes through those gendered words. And I realized it was bothering me like greatly. Like talking about myself and using those gendered words to refer to myself. It was terrible. So I started to consciously change the way I use language. You, at first, it is a little weird because you you build the phrase in a fashion that is not usual. It's not the way you are used to talk because. And at first, it was really really awkward. I was like, whoa, what the fuck am I even saying? But then I started getting used to it, and now like. Two years later, it is in fact really hard to me to speak in a gendered way. I mentioned that it is hard because when I meet a binary trans person, I try to use gendered language to, in order to validate her gender. Because I think if I was in their place, I would like that to happen. So, But it, it is really hard to me because I got used to this gender neutralish language but even then sometimes you reach a dead end in language where you cannot escape gender where you have you you don't have a gender neutral alternative you don't have how to escape those gendered language endings so what do we do then oh my god uh, it's awkward basically i have switched into male endings so it's like a, i'm going to say the word beautiful, male and female. It's bonito and bonita, like the O and the A in the end. And most of the words are gendered like that. What I do is switch to male, but I don't really say the O, I say like bonito. Like, I don't really mark what letter I'm using in the end of the word. Still, 
there are some things like when you are going to say, oh, I'm someone's daughter, I'm someone's cousin. The words we have are gendered. It is very rare to have a gender neutral alternative for those. And I have kind of tried to use the male alternative. It feels strange. It's, it's like articles. We have articles in our language. Like articles are really pointless. If you don't know, it's nothing but one letter that goes before a noun that says it's gender. Like the only purpose of an article is to determine the quantity and the gender of something. Like, okay, quantity, yeah, fine, but gender, why? Why do you do that to us? <sighs> Language is awkward. As for those nouns and those articles, I, I find it really strange to use the male alternative because it sounds really dude to me. Like, yo, dude. And I don't feel comfortable. So, basically, in language, so I, I kind of switch. Uh, in, in some situations, I use male. Some, I use female. Uh, there is no... I kind of just mix up because gender is bullshit. And it's all I can do. Other people, they mostly... Well, they do what cis people do, that's all uh, those awkward, gender-neutral-ish alternatives. I look like, oh, cis people. <sighs> they use an X or some symbols instead of the gender letter in the end of the words. And it's it, it's kind of awkward, but I do appreciate their intention. I, I know, I have a friend that does it that all the time. <laughs> and she, she's probably watching this, so... Honey, I love you, but it's 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 funny. I don't know, it's funny. So that's basically it. I think about my relationship to language as a very feminine gay man would. Because at least in here, some very feminine gay men, we call them bishas, they use sometimes female pronouns. They refer to themselves and to, to other ones of them as female, uh, but it is not in a serious way, it is in, in a kind of playful way. I like to picture myself as a very feminine gay man, which is basically how I how I behave, how I feel, like, generally, even though I don't feel like a, a boy, like, really boy, but uh, anyway, gender is meaningless. So, that's my relationship to language. I am a sissy. It's gorgeous. It's uh, so gorgeous. So, dear sweet English-speaking, English-living people, thank God or Buddha or Yehova or, or the universe or fate or whatever thing you believe or don't believe in, thank them for living in English because, boy, you don't know how much trouble it spares you. Oh, you don't know, just don't know. Yep. That was pretty much it. Oh, that's very important. We are running out of topics. So if you have any suggestion at all to give us as for what to say in the next videos, please post it on the comments. If you live in another country that has a gendered language and you want to talk about how it works, please post it. I would love to know it. If you are a trans person and if you have something to say about how to navigate language, Please post it. I would love to read it. Really, really, from the heart. Yeah, take care of yourselves and say hi to the little piggy in my mug. Bye!